Hi, I'm Georgia Williams with the Investing News Network, and we're here at the PDAC convention in Toronto. Joining me today is Nick Carter, Executive Vice President of UXC. Good morning, Nick. Good morning. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well, Georgia. Thank you for speaking with us today. Thanks. Um, uranium prices continue to be locked below $26 a pound. And we had heard that if the Section 232 petition had come to some conclusions, that might move prices. Then that optimism was transferred to the Nuclear Fuel Working Group report. And now we have President Trump's proposed $150 million a year stockpile. Will this be enough to move prices if it's approved, or are we looking for other catalysts? Well, I mean, we were act we were actually kind of hopeful that you know the Section 232 might move the needle a little bit, um, but you know what happened is obviously um, you know the Trump administration decided uh, that um, they wouldn't you know impose any kind of quota on you know quota on U.S. utilities, so that sort of transferred over to this nuclear fuel working group where. They're talking about 150 million. Now that would be uranium and even potentially some conversion money in that. So we're not sure exactly how many pounds that's going to transfer mm -hmm. to. But you know, we, let's just say to transfer up to maybe two to three million pounds on an annual basis. But the issue there is that would be specifically used for a U.S. strategic reserve, right. so it wouldn't necessarily impact the market because that U.S. production is basically taken off market, put in the reserve in a reserve figure. Now the issue is, will any of these U.S. producers potentially produce beyond what is right. required? So they may have a, a million pound contract with the government you know, where they have to supply in those million pounds, but they could actually produce, say, a million and a half or two right. million and potentially supply that additional half a million or a million into the market that way. And yeah, that could potentially impact the market. But unfortunately, you know, if that happened, it would probably be to the downside because you're adding mm -hmm. production to this market. So, right. you know, if, if they're just producing the, the annual amount required in the contract, is probably not going to have any direct impact on the market per se. Right. I know last time you spoke with us, you had talked about um, utility companies doing some stockpiling of their own mm -hmm. and that they would likely draw down on that inventory before returning to market. And we mm -hmm. still haven't seen them come to market. But how far can they draw down? Like you were saying, these are strategic stockpiles. Mm -hmm. So how far would they draw down? Yeah, I mean, some of them have come to the market. We're still seeing a lot of utilities do smaller deals. We're not seeing the long-term type deals right. that we saw in that 2003 to 2007 time period where they were buying lots lots of uranium under mm -hmm. long-term contracts. So they're, you know, because the spot price is so low, they're doing more fixed price type contracts right. for like two, three years, you know, some four years. Right. Um, but th there are a couple, I mean, some of the non-US utilities doing longer term deals. Um, but you know the, the, they, they, the U.S. utilities per particularly continue to draw down um, their inventory numbers. I think the EIA, U.S. Government Energy Information Administration, came out with their report last year, where U.S. utilities were at about 110 million pounds. So they're at about the two and a half, two and a half year inventory level. Okay. We think they'll continue to draw that down to about a two-year level, which will sort of be a desired level. So, you know, we think another 20, 20 to 30 million pounds of drawdown at, for U.S. utilities. We do think non-U.S. utilities are probably, you know, they're at about three years. They could draw down a little bit more, but we think they're pretty close to their desired inventory level. Obviously, Japan's another issue because they haven't had a lot of re reactor restarts there, so their inventories are actually quite high there. Right. Um, and not a lot of that material is funneled into the market, but there's always the potential of some of that funneling into the market in the future. Now, you had mentioned 2007, and that's when we had um, the highest price, well, a record price, mm -hmm. and it was around $134, $136. Yeah. And there was 439 active nuclear reactors. Mm -hmm. Today, the spot price is $25 at best, and we have 440 to 445. Mm -hmm. So why is there such a price discrepancy? Um, a lot of it is, we have seen a shift over the years, you know, from sort of that 
2003 period to today where a lot of the production has shifted to lower cost ISR production, particularly okay. in Kazakhstan. So right. you have now producing in 2019, we had about five, about 59 million pounds of production coming out of Kazakhstan. And the majority of that is all sub $20 right. production. So it's been sort of a shift to even sort of a lower cost basis. They've, the Kazakhs have also benefited from the strong U.S. dollar, mm -hmm. um, which didn't, you know, the U.S. dollar was weaker, say, 10, 15 years ago. Right. So that's had a big impact on the market as well. Um, and then, you know, fr since Fukushima happened, we continue to really have an overproduction situation from 11 to about 16 before we started finally seeing some cuts in the market. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's just it's sort of built on top of each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what that's one of the reasons why we're still so low today, unfortunately. <laughs> right. Um, this year we have Chemical coming to market to purchase 20 million um, pounds, roughly. We have utility companies maybe coming to market. We have the U.S. maybe demanding six million pounds. Is there a production shortage that might be imminent, or? Um, we, we think the mar market's obviously getting much tighter. Um, obviously, when Cameco comes to the market, you know, they're pulling pounds that are either uncommitted production from other suppliers or pounds that are actually in inventory sitting somewhere that is actually being pulled off the market and, and being utilized in their contracts. So, you know, we are certainly positive about that. We do think, you know, utilities, maybe not, we do think they'll be a little bit more active this year. There is the lingering um, U.S.-Russian suspension agreement, um, and that's a, an agreement where U.S. utilities can buy up to 20% of their your, of their utility requir reactor requirements right. um, in the form of enriched uranium from Russia. And so that ends this year. There's, there's a chance that it's probably going to be renewed, but we're not sure if it's going to be at the same 20% level. Right. Just, you know, Maybe it's lower or maybe it goes away entirely. And so I think once you, some U.S. utilities get some clarity on that, unfortunately a little bit like the Section 232, right. it's sort of out there. and. You know, I think we may have a little bit more action um, on behalf of U.S. utilities once that's sort of been finalized. Um, but we do think it'll be, you know, they'll be more active, and we do see a tightening of supply. I think 2020 this year will be a little tighter, um, and then continuing into 2021. But then starting in 22 through 25, we could potentially see some supply deficits. But we do think that could easily be made up for by a ramp up in Kazakh production because right. they're currently operating below sort of their uh, planned target levels. And then also you, you obviously have the Kartha River, which is Cameco's mine that could come on at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. um, it's no shoe in at this point, but there is excess production out or unutilized capacity out there mm -hmm. that, that could step in. but. Definitely, we should start seeing some more upward pressure on price. You mentioned MacArthur River, and in 2018, we had a lot of you know um, temporary shutterings of mm -hmm. projects, and the Kazakhs took some of their production mm -hmm. offline as well. If prices continue to be you know depressed below $26 a pound, do you see more production coming offline? Um, it's always a possibility. I mean. Obviously, it's tough for the Kazakhs to cut when one of the, they're one of the lowest cost producers out there. Right. Um, one of the issues is, you know, for instance, some of the, the uh, mines, for instance, like Rossing, we thought at one time would shutter, mm -hmm. but then the Chinese bought it. And, you know, we view that as sort of inelastic supply because the right. Chinese need that material. So, you know, I think there's a lot of the remaining production out there that's higher cost is all the majority of it's inelastic mm -hmm. but certainly you know we can't rule out that there might be some additional cuts um, even at some of the more economic mines um, if the price continued to stay below stay below say twenty six dollars per pound right yeah. you know, do you have any price predictions for this year or where um, do you think it might end up yeah I mean obviously I think we've seen over the past nine months 
we sort of tested that $24 level mm -hmm. twice in, in that nine month period and it hasn't pushed below that. So we think 24 is a pretty firm price bottom. Um, obviously to the upside, we need to sort of break that $26 resistance right. point. But we do think, you know, we could potentially push as high as 29. We, we haven't seen any financial activity in the market. We did see a lot of that back in 2018 right. when we had hedge funds and we had Yellow Cake and UPC combined for about 14 million pounds that they acquired. It's always a possibility that, you know, we could see some of the financials step back in if they, you know, project that, that there's a chance that price may move higher um, just on basic supply demand fundamentals. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, 29 would sort of be sort of our upside for the year, unless we, we do see more production cuts and right. that could maybe push it a little higher. Well, thank you very much for speaking with me, Nick. Thank you, Georgia. I'm Georgia Williams with the Investing News Network.